Hi everyone, Lisa Stones Peck from Spellbound Miniatures here. Welcome to our YouTube channel and welcome to our wood burning stove tutorial part one. You'll have seen on Instagram and Facebook a few sneak peeks at these stoves. I'm finally glad to say I can do the tutorial today. There is some noise outside, they've dug up the road, so apologies if you hear that. What we're going to cover in this tutorial part one is making the basic stove and then in part two we're going to look at how I hinged the doors and also some of the lighting effects. So you'll notice I've done three different scales here, 24th, 12th and 6th scale. It's possible to do it in 148th, um, that's a bit small for me. So I'll put some notes at the end how I adjusted the materials to make it in 6th and 24th but this tutorial is in 12th and it's the exact same principle whichever scale you decide to make it in. So let's go over to Design Space now and I'll talk you through the SVG before we cut it. Okay, so here we are in Design Space. You'll have unzipped your SVG bundle and imported them, uploaded them to Design Space. There's four basic files the traditional stove in wide and standard width and then the modern stove in wide and standard width. So let's look at the traditional stove in the standard width and the standard width stoves will fit in our fireplace surround and the chimney breast and hearth that are in the witch's cottage and the book nooks. So you can see here it's got a lovely ornate door. It has, if I just uncroup it actually, this one is slightly different. These are the tabs if you want to make a hinged door. So this is the hinged tab layer. These pieces will layer over the arched piece there to create a nice detailed layer and some depth. This is the back of the door frame so this is kind of the front of the stove and then the door opens and shuts onto that. You've got B1 and T1 and these are all red which is craft board and B1 is the base first level and T1 is the top first level and then over here we've got B2 and T2, so that's the base and the top. And they fit over there. If I just bring that one to the front, that's how that fits on there. And we've got, because this is 12th scale, the black denotes matte board. And that's one and a half mil. Um, the sides there are marked with S and these are the legs. It will come in in 12 scale, so you don't need to change that if you're making it in 12 scale. And you'll notice over here currently the text always imports as a cut line. So if you wanted to not draw them, you can just hide the text by clicking the eye there. If you wanted to draw the text onto your pieces, you select them here, then you come over to the line type and you make it a draw line. This will now prompt you when you go to make it to put the pen into the A, clamp A, and it will draw the label for you. What you will need to do is attach the label to the piece so that when you click make it, if you didn't do that, you'd notice here it puts all the letters somewhere on a different mat and thinks it's going to cut them. And the one that we did attach and change to draw, you can see that's over here on a mat with the rest of the craft board and it does say draw and then cut. 
So that's one thing you'll always need to do if you want to label your pieces is change them to draw and then attach them to the piece that you want the label on. The green square as always just indicates scale so you would hide that. This is the blue layer here is for acetate or perspex if you wanted to put a, a glass effect behind your stove door. I haven't done it because I'm photographing them and it always reflects the light. Um, it's up to you if you want to do that. Um, plastic packaging also works very well for that. So once you've labelled them or not, you'll go and cut these from mat board for the black pieces, craft board for the red. And then we'll go and look just quickly at the modern stove. Let's look at the wide one now. Bring that down here. Again, you'll see that imports in 12 scale zoom out a little bit we've got the very same kind of pieces we've got the legs the acetate shape for the glass t1 and b1 the top layers of the base the sides the back piece the modern stove has a more square door and a faux draw front you can choose the size of the draw front or you could layer them up if you want to again there is the optional hinged tab layer and I would say when you while you're cutting out of craft board you might as well cut this layer anyway so that when you're looking at assembling your pieces you can play around with it and think oh maybe I do want to have a go with the hinges or not so it's just easy to cut that it's only a small piece so I would always recommend cutting that anyway and then you'll also notice in all of the back pieces there's a circle down here if I ungroup it and click on this piece, the circle is for when, if you were going to have um, an LED bulb, say, lighting up the fire, the hole there allows you to put the LED bulb in, but still have it wired to a battery pack externally. When you get on later on in the video, or even in part two, you'll see, I've kind of done three different versions of how to light the stove but it's much easier to let the machine cut this for you. So I would say if in doubt cut the hole, you could always tape it up or block over it again if you didn't want the hole, but it's a nice neat hole if you do want one. If you know you're not going to want the hole, then you remove it from design space by clicking on the piece, coming down here to contour, and then this is the hole. Let's zoom out. So you can see there, there's the hole and you don't want to cut it. So you click on it to hide it and it removes it. So then when you come back, it's no longer got the hole there. And then when you click make it, we'll ignore the letters because we haven't attached those in this one. You can see that's the standard stove that has the hole in the back piece and that's actually the back piece for the wide stove without the hole. And there's just a couple of notes to think about when we're going to cut these more intricate pieces. The I'm going to put a video up in a second of the, how the machine sounds when it's cutting these curves. Some of these curves have a lot of nodes on them and it will make quite a little noise as it's sort of navigating at each node and each section, but it does result in a very smooth curve. So don't be alarmed when your machine starts making sort of little burring noises. <laughs> And also, for this traditional intricate design, I used the intricate card setting in Design Space, not the craft board setting. And I also made it, 
um, cut twice so it kind of does two passes per go and then you don't unload the mat when it's finished the first round of two cuts you immediately press the green cricket button again and it will do another two passes and that was enough to completely cut through the craft board um, and it made a very neat job of it so um, definitely I would recommend the intricate card setting for that and also when you're cutting matte board always remember to put the star wheels all the way over to the right on the machine so they don't leave marks on your matte board so let's go back into the studio now and build the stove so these are the cut pieces you'll notice I've done the craft board in black and the matte board in white and this is just to help on a tutorial for you to see the difference in layers. I wouldn't suggest you actually do them at different colours. So you'll be familiar now with the back piece which has the hole for the LED light or not depending on whether you're going to light it yourself. The front sort of frame of the door but, and then the opening part of the door frame. The top and bottom with the sort of thinner layer, thinner layer, narrower layer to give it some detail and then the two side pieces, the front and back legs and the side legs and I have also cut the tabbed layer so that I can show you how to incorporate that in the door if you're going to be making the hinge door or you just want the effect of hinges. So the first thing that we do is we're going to glue the sides onto the back and they fit onto it on the inside. They don't go on the outside edge like that. They go up to it there. So there rather than there. So we're going to put glue on this edge and put it at right angles onto the back if you've got a gluing jig by all means use that I'm going to do this by hand so we'll put glue on that edge and glue on the left and the right hand side So while that's setting up, I'm going to glue the top bevel layer onto the bottom. So that's T1 onto T2 and B1 onto B2. And we're going to line up flush with the back. It doesn't matter which side is the front or the back, it's the same, it's symmetrical. So line it up with the back and then leave equal distance around the other three sides. And we're gonna do that to both the T1 and T2 and B1 and B2 pieces. And they should just look like that. Hopefully you can see the difference there. And I'll press those under my stainless steel bench brock to stay flat whilst they dry. Okay, so next we're going to glue the legs and that's just like we do with the back and sides. We put glue on the end of the sm smaller side piece and put that onto the sort of inside of the front or back piece. So I don't like that again rather than like that. And always make sure that it's level at the top and the bottom so then it will sit nice and squarely and if you've got one of these mats they're really handy as well because you can line it up while it dries and make sure that it's exactly 90 degrees And then the other thing to think about is the door. 
and on the opening door you'll want to put the hinged layer in I don't know if you can see that there but it has these tabs on it and depending on how thick the tube is if you're going to do a tubed hinge mine was 1.5 mil in diameter so I had two layers of craft board and then I put the hinged layer and of course that would have the holes in it the same I've just left them in there so we can see the difference and then I put the outside frame layer on with the faux draw detail and that I don't know if you're going to be able to see that means that we've got enough of a gap there between the hinged tab and this face for one and a half mil of tube to sit inside so that you're going to need to play around with depending on what you use for your hinge is to make sure that you've got enough of a depth between where it's going to sit on the stove if this is the front of the stove like that and in there to the back of the hinged tab if you had the hinged piece back flush with the stove and there was no gap here it wouldn't be able to open you need it to kind of stand off to be able to open so that will become more clear in part two if you're going to do the hinged video I suggest you watch that there next before you glue your door but for this version we're going to do a fixed door and I like to do it like this one instead of hinging the door we actually glue essentially the door onto the front frame and we glue that in place and then we make the whole front frame removable so you could still light it up so I don't know if you can see that there I have got the door on here like the contemporary version of the planar door but the whole thing fits on and it literally just secures into place between the top and the bottom the T1 and T2 and B1 and B2 pieces so you can leave the whole front removable if you don't fancy doing the hinge or if you want to do the hinge cut the layer with the tabs and make sure that you put them somewhere in the mix allowing enough space behind the hinge layer for your tubing to go depending on the diameter of your tubing you could also use tiny kind of normal butterfly hinges for this if you can get them no bigger I don't know if that's going to show up than the depth there of the frame sort of the thickness of this piece there so have a play around like I say always dry fit it see if you can work out something with the bits that you've got I did order the tubing for this project online from a model makers um, but for the this version we're just going to do a fixed door so you simply glue up your layers I'll do them two at a time so glue the two more fancy layers together you could have two of the frame sort of plain frame there and then you'll glue them all together and that just gives some depth and detail and creates the look of a faux front door there and again press those while we dry so they dry nice and flat so I'm going to go and do that now and then the next bit to do is to glue the front leg onto the two sides so I'm going to put some glue there and there and glue that bit on 
and then I'll glue up my door layers and then we'll come back. Okay, so while the door sets up, there's two ways to do the next bit. If you're going to put the hinged door on, you can glue this front frame now onto the back and sides and just make sure you might need to just tweak the sides out if they've set a little bit towing in or even out and glue that like that so you kind of create a box and then so that's putting the glue on the front of the sides and then putting the front frame on to do the removable front we leave the this to one side and we're going to glue the back and sides onto the base which is B1 and B2 and we line everything up flush at the back so like we did for this piece it's flush at the back with a gap around the front and sides equal we do that with the back we line the back piece up level and then make sure that each side there's a the same size gap and that the sides are parallel you could draw this first if you wanted to with a pencil to make sure you've lined it up when you've got the glue on but all you really need to make sure is that you basically have it centrally on here but lined up at the back so that hopefully can you see that there when it is on there and both sides are parallel the front will match up like that so i'm going to glue that now and you can always put it down on your bench and press the back down so that you know and this piece they're in alignment and flush at the back and then just check that these sides are parallel that one needs to come out just a little bit there we go and double check by making sure that when that's on the front, you've got no gaps at the side. Just let that set up for a couple of minutes and then we do exactly the same with the top, but we make sure that this detail layer is on the top too. So when you're looking at it, both of these are facing up rather than that way round. You could do it that way around if you want to, but I like to have the sort of beveled effect on the top of the stove too. So we do that exactly the same way. And again, I eyeball it, you could measure to just check that it's equidistant on both sides. So this is the top. We know because the hole for the LED light, if you've got one, is nearer the bottom. And then we've got the base already glued on. So just leave that now. You could put a little weight on top just to help it while it sets up. So once the sort of main body of the stove has set up, we are going to glue the legs on and again they line up flush with the back and then equal distant around the front and the sides and they might be a little movement there so if they're not exactly square you can easily correct that when you glue them on you can just gently nudge them sort of into square and make sure that you've just got a gap around an equal gap around the sides. Make sure you've got the stove the right way up so you don't accidentally glue the legs on the top. Um, so you want the 
smaller detailed panel on the top and then you glue the legs on the bottom and it's also the edge nearest the hole for the LED light bulb if you're putting one of those in and then line up the back and then one of the sides and everything else kind of goes in the right place. Always put it down flush if you want to make sure that both the side, the back, sorry, of the underside of the legs, if they're all lined up. There are too many sides. And you can see there, mine is slightly askew. So hold the back, which is square, and then gently nudge them over and press them down. There's a little bit of movement in the legs at the moment because they are only one layer of matte board. This is on the 12 scale. But once you've painted them or varnished them or whatever finish you're giving them, they do come up pretty sturdy. And you could always give them a wash of super glue. I like to, once the legs have set up, with the tacky glue, I do run a bead of super glue along the inside of that join. And also if you've got any glue squeezing out, just always wipe that off with a cocktail stick. So that's the main body of the stove and legs. If you're doing the hinged, version you will also have this on the front now um, and you'll see it's it's a very tight fit because it's exactly the same height as the sides but it does just hold itself in place when you paint it if you do get paint on the top or bottom layer you'll need to sand it down and you might want to sand it down even before you paint it because it will just get even more um, tight fit there, but it holds itself. You can also, um, and I'll show you what I did for the sixth scale, you can leave the top removable. I haven't finished painting this yet, but I cut another piece of chipboard the same size as this, so that literally I can put the top on and it should locate it's a little bit of a tight squeeze there we go because i found even though i did make this door hinged and openable i wanted to access the fire so you can leave the top removable you can leave the whole front removable it's up to you whichever way is easiest for you and whichever where you're going to do the lighting as well. So the only other thing to do, if you're doing the fixed door version, is to get your door and glue it onto the front frame. Now I haven't put the acetate in yet. You'll notice I haven't actually oh, put them in any of these because for photograph and video purposes if I put acetate in it reflects the light so before you glue this in you'll probably want to put the acetate in you can just glue it on the back and then glue it on there you could glue it within the layers of the door if you wanted to it depends what kind of glue you've got some glues cause the acetate to go a little bit um, opaque super glues do that um, tacky glue is not bad so I think it's better when you've got the larger frame to put a very thin bead of glue around that and if you're not using acetate you could use just clear plastic packaging from something very thin perspex or leave it out it's up to you but that's the only reason I haven't put it in yet on mine is so that I can photograph them. So if you're going to do acetate, put it in now. 
you could even for the um, fixed door you could put acetate across the whole of that back piece so okay. that's up to you and then once you've got the acetate on or not you just put glue around the outside edge because that's the only bit that's going to touch the frame and then line the inside hole of the door up with this edge in the frame and wipe off any excess glue which I always have and then I would press that while it dries things can warp especially with water-based paint but that is it you'll notice this is the wide version and also the traditional version and you also get a wider narrow option as we discussed earlier in design space so you can mix and match them okay so if we're back in design space and we pick a file that you want to cut in six scale first it comes in in 12th so we're going to change it to 6th so we go on hide everything find the green square unhide it it's currently one inch square make sure the ratio is locked change that to two inches square and if we go back and unhide everything it's now doubled in size so that's sixth scale now not twelfth and then what I did was initially I cut all of the pieces in two mil chipboard so we're here now the black indicates matte board and the red indicates craft board I cut all of the pieces in chipboard except for these there are five pieces there in but the hinge layer the craft board layer would be too detailed to cut in chipboard so I essentially swapped out these black pieces for chipboard and the red pieces for matte board except for this one hinge tab layer which I still cut in craft board it doesn't need to be thicker than that so to give you a visual clue I'm going to ungroup them now they're all the right size and let's hide that one hide that one and I'll leave that just as a reminder the craft board layer so everything that's black if we selected them by shift and select change them to brown and that's just a visual representation so that would now be cut from chipboard I then cut only one layer of the sort of ornate door in matte board so let's change that to black I kept the hinge layer in craft board and I did one frame detail layer also in matte board and that oh and those two as well they're currently um, craft board so I changed those and cut those from matte board then I built that and I'll put a photo up now it was a little skinny so the two mil chipboard wasn't a direct sort of doubling up of the original file in matte board and that's correct because matte board is nearly one and a half mil and the chipboard's only two mil 
So I then cut. I didn't need any more sort of width. I just needed the depth. So I then cut another piece for the back and the front and the back and the front of the legs. I'm going to copy those and duplicate them. Those are the extra pieces I cut in matte board. So I kind of clad them onto the chipboard body. So I'm going to change those now from brown to black for matte board. So if, and let's just turn off the writing because it's going to put those on the mat if we go to the mat in a second. I think that's it all. So when we click make it you'll see we have now for matte board we're cutting the T1 and B1, the sort of top layer of the top and base an extra cladding part for the front of the stove and the back, another cladding part for the front and back of the legs, and then the actual front frame and the door. I've still got the hinge layer in craft board and then from chipboard we cut a whole stove. So that's what I did to get the sixth scale version. You might need to change around these again depending on the materials that you've got. So for the 24th scale we'll do the same, we'll get a fresh file in. It comes in in 12th so we're going to hide everything again show the green square, resize that this time to 0.5 and then you'll see everything there comes out a lot smaller and then we'll hide the two of those and essentially I, if you control C and then control V copy and paste or you can use the duplicate function in design space. I doubled everything up and I cut two layers of everything to play around with at first and I ungroup them now. What worked for me was I had two pairs or two layers of craft board for each of the legs front and back so I glued the pairs together I did the same for the back so I had two backs and the front frame I did the same for the sides so there are also two layers per side and also the base which is B2 I did two layers for and the top and they were in craft board so ignore all these letters because we're not going to um, cut those and just select those and delete them. And I also in craft board still cut one hinge layer you'll need to play around with this but try two detail layers and one frame layer and then one thinner or slightly smaller 
top and base layer if you remember that's slightly smaller than those and it creates that beveled look but only one layer of each of those so we'll take the other pieces out of the way but I cut all of this in craft board so if I select all and then change the colour to red that's what I cut the 24th scale stove from glued the pairs together and then constructed it in the same way as the 12th scale one you might find depending on what you use that you don't want two layers in some places or you'd like more than more than two that's up to you the legs actually came out sturdily enough and if you felt they weren't you could always wash over them with super glue so that's how I created the 6th and 24th scale versions and then I to get these I sprayed them with a spray primer and then used a white enamel spray paint I love spray paint um, oh I don't know if you can see that it's so bright and shiny, it reflects all the light. It kind of makes it look more realistic than big brush marks. So that's why I use spray paint. And then we'll go on to the handles and hinges in part two. So thank you for joining me today and I'll see you soon.